guys it's me professor d if you're new here welcome to my channel today i want to talk to you guys about diabetes now diabetes is so huge it's such a huge topic i'm not going to cover everything in this video i'm actually going to uh, break the content down so on this video i want to focus on the pathophysiology and the etiology of uh, diabetes and this is a disease that's so prominent so many people get i promise you you're going to see this on nclex you're going to see this on hesi you're going to see it on ati if you're still a student excuse me if you're still a student it will be on your test, on your midterm final. So um, let's get into it. So the first thing, by the way, guys, if you see my eyes kind of deviate to the left, I have a PowerPoint up and it kind of keeps the concept I, concepts I want to talk to you about in order. I will put those same PowerPoints on the split screen. So when you're watching me, You'll also see the PowerPoint as well, so you can kind of listen to my voice while you're following along if you like. So, uh, etiology and pathophysiology. Um, I want to focus on type 1 and type 2, and the reason for that is that you guys are going to learn about the gestational uh, diabetes when you get into OB right? So for med surge, I want to focus on your type 1 and type 2. Type 1, and we're going to go in depth with that, but for now, I want you to know that type 1, this is generally autoimmune, okay? This is something usually the patient's born with. And when I say autoimmune, the body is attacking itself, and I'm going to explain that to you shortly. So the type 1, usually the patients are diagnosed with this at an early age, okay? Now, the type 2 tend to be the ones that are diagnosed at a later age, a later stage in life. And the reason for that, it takes years and years and years, matter of fact, even decades for that patient to get to type 2 diabetes. And I'll explain that shortly. Okay, let's talk about the difference between type 1, type 2. I, I gave you a couple of differences, but going on the PowerPoint, the age of onset, like I said, your type 1, it's more common in the juvenile and that's why type 1 used to be called the juvenile onset diabetes versus your type 2 it you see that in later stages in life um the type of onset your type 1 it is very uh, abrupt okay the patient will start to exhibit those signs and symptoms of hyperglycemia like that and the reason for that, I'm going to go into it later, but the reason for that, the patients who have type 1, either their body's not producing any insulin at all, or the amount that they're producing is so small, it's not enough. It's not enough to get the sugar out of the bloodstream, okay, and to the cells where they need to be. So you're going to see those symptoms such as polyphagia, polydipsia, polyuria, and I explain, I'll explain that later, versus your type 2, where type 2 diabetes is very sneaky. The patient can have type 2 diabetes for years and will never know, okay? And they won't know until the diabetes is so bad, their blood sugar gets so high that we'll finally see those signs and symptoms. So it's very sneaky, okay? The word you'll see on the PowerPoint is insidious, and that's what insidious means. It means gradual, very, very sneaky. So let's talk about diabetes, and I want to make sure that you guys are all clear what diabetes is. Diabetes is when the blood sugar is too high. Here's the problem with that. If there's sugar in the blood, where do we need the sugar to be? The sugar needs to be in the tissues where the tissues need the sugar for the energy, right? The muscles, your brain, all of your organs, your eyes, your liver, your spleen, your kidneys. I could go on and on. Your organs, your cells, your tissues. That's what needs the sugar, okay? But if the sugar is stuck in the blood, it can't do anything. So I want you to think about sugar being in the blood and I want you to think about honey, Okay, think about how slow molasses move, right? So that sugar being stuck in the blood makes the blood thick and slow. Now I want you to think about this. Blood is important for every organ in our body. Blood is what feeds oxygen, vitamins, nutrients to the brain, to your liver, to your spleen, to your muscles, right? But now because you have the sugar that's stuck in the blood, it's slowing all the blood down and the sugar can't get to those tissues and feed the tissues. This is what we call perfusion. It can't perfuse those organs. It can't perfuse those tissues. And that's why high blood sugar, that's why it's such a problem. That's why diabetes is such a problem. And the reason insulin is such a great thing, what insulin does, 
all of that sugar that was stuck in the blood, it pulls it out of the blood and the insulin acts as a transportation vehicle to bring the sugar from the blood to the organs where um, it can do its work, okay? Um, something else that's important for you guys to know, environmental factors, okay? I can't tell you how many test questions I've seen to cover this, okay? Environmental uh, factors. So for type one, um, it could be viral. The patient could have had a really bad viral infection and that really affected the pancreas and that what caused them to go into type one diabetes. Now, why am I mentioning the pancreas? So you guys have to know this, I promise. You gotta know it. The pancreas, okay, inside of the pancreas is the island of Langerhans. That island of Langerhans as your beta cells. Those beta cells, that's where your insulin's produced, okay? So just so you know, if you guys ever get a test question and in the question it has something to do with the patient having a problem with their pancreas, one of the first things you need to start thinking about is diabetes. Because if there's a problem with the pancreas, they're not producing insulin. They're not producing insulin, they have what? Diabetes, that's your type one. So environmental could be toxins or it could be viral for your type one for type two. Remember how I told you that with the type two diabetes, we tend to see that later in life? Let me explain why. With the type two diabetes, the problem in type two is not that, you know, the pancreas was harmed because of a toxin or the pancreas was harmed because of a viral infection. No, let me tell you what's going on in your type two diabetes. In the type two diabetes, the pancreas is basically given up, and I'm gonna explain that. So patients have gone, the patients has gone years and years of years of eating cookies and cake and ice cream and all of these sugary foods, right? Every time you put something in your mouth, okay, automatically your pancreas goes into action and it starts shooting out this insulin. Why? Because it knows as soon as you eat something, your blood sugar is gonna go up. So the pancreas shoots out this insulin to make the insulin pull out all of the sugar that was in the blood and take it out and bring it to the tissues, right? So I want you to imagine year after year after year after year of a patient forcing their pancreas to shoot out this excess insulin because they're eating all of these sugary foods. So by the time that patient hits their late 40s, 50s, 60s, guess what? That pancreas is shocked. That pancreas is like, you know what? I give up. You're on your own. You made me work too hard for all these years. I'm not doing it anymore, right? So the problem in type 2, right, is um, diet, eating too much sugary foods, high carb foods, right? Lack of exercise. Why? Because exercise also helps to um, um, burn fat and it helps to decrease the blood that's, uh, sugar that's in the blood and bring it back to the tissues where it needs to be. Okay? So let me tell you, about 98% of these patients that are type 2 diabetic, once they start um, eating right and exercising, guess what? They don't have to be diabetic anymore. They can revert back and they will not be diabetic anymore. Because what happens is when they start eating right and exercising, I'm talking about the type twos now, what happens is the pancreas wakes up and the pancreas was like, oh, okay, you want to be good to me now? I'll be good to you. And the pancreas starts shooting out insulin just like it used to do, okay? So type two diabetes is considered a modifiable disease. What does that mean? You don't have to have type two diabetes. You eat right and you exercise, you get your hemoglobin A1C down, and that's something I'll talk to you guys about later, and you won't be diabetic anymore, okay?